In this video, I'm going to give you three tips on how to be more successful and how to avoid losing money with real estate. Let's check this out. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. Was not that bad? Yes, trust me it is. Hey, who's that guy? Who invited him? My life would be different if I knew some concept that I will cover here when I bought my first property six years ago. Well, that's true. During these six years, my condo lost 20 grand in market value. During the same years that I owned my condo, I got a friend of mine with knowledge in real estate investing and, and he got over a hundred grand in appreciation over the house he bought the same year that I bought my condo. And when he decided to move out of this property, he rented it out and made a profit of 600 per month. My condo is also rented, but at zero profit per month. And even the first two years, I paid an amount every month because the rent will not cover every cost of the property. That's the difference between a pro and a noob there. Knowing which property is going to make a good rental or not, and knowing the market. All right, tip number one here. When you look at a property, just don't look at its present. Try to anticipate this fu its future. Its, fu its, fu its, fu its future. What is it going to be like in five years, 10 years, or the holding period that you're looking for? Are you going to hold it for two years? How is it going to be in two years? When I bought my first property six years ago, I did not think of the upcoming evolution of the area I was buying in. I was only looking at its present. I did not think of how the area would evolve and how the supply and demand would evolve for this type of property. What a noob I was. <laughs> I knew a couple of things about the neighborhood and I knew a couple of projects that were about to be built in the neighborhood. So I guess I get at least one point there. But I think what I failed the most is that I didn't even look into my own future. How long will I stay in this property? And what's the plan if I want to move out? What happens then? Really, that's the moment where you can adjust to your strategy to the property you're buying. You can choose the project that will fit the holding period that you're looking for. <clears throat> and that is the moment where you want to prepare your exit strategy. Do you want to sell it? Flip it, rent it out, like it, subscribe it. <sighs> yeah, I tried. And I also didn't know what to look for when choosing a good area for a property. And that will lead us to tip number two. And tip number two would be to subscribe to my channel. I'm joking. It's to, it's to understand the market you're in. Back then, I did not know what to look for, how to analyze a market, but I will give you things to analyze right here. So first thing to understand is what is the major economic activities in your area? Or is it just one activity that, that drives the whole area? How is it going to evolve during the years that you will hold the property? Gross domestic product. How did it evolve over the last years? And what are the prediction for the years to come? Population growth. How does it evolve? and the median age because I like to invest in a place where the wage are growing. So I want to have a population that is young and that is working. Job creation and median income. Is it growing? Because the increase of the population and the increase of the income in area is really a factor that, that will drive the value up of the property and the real estate market. Accessibility of services. Is there universities is there hospital is there is there things to attract people to come work in this area or is there a project to build some because that could be a real interesting cue about a market new developments in transport is there new highways is there is there new airport is there a new LRT line is there something that that will change the way people travel to this place. And these huge developments will really give a good cue if a market is shifting. And finally, the neighborhood. Is this a neighborhood that is transitioning from 
a bad area to a good area. Obviously, there are more factors that will affect the value of properties and of the renting market. But, but if you got the point of what will affect the supply and demand for the housing in an area, that's good. And then due diligence, gotta make your homeworks. And for last tip number three is run the numbers. Run the numbers and personally, I like to run them like a pessimist. By doing this, I demonstrate myself that I can handle the worst situation like 2020. And I can only get satisfied when I get better outcomes than what I predicted. I've seen a lot of budget forecasts with the best scenario possible. And this as an investor can be a dangerous game. All right, guys. So that's it for this one. I hope you like this. And if you did, you can hit the like and subscribe button down there. And if you want to see what are the most expensive mistakes that the homeowners do, you can hit the link right there or there or there and that's gonna be there all right guys i'm out see you in the next one